Hey, welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess Videos. We're on game number five of Bobby Fischer's tournament games. He's playing a man named Thomason. Fischer's going to play the black. He plays the King's Indian defense. This is in 1955. He's still 12 years old here. This game is fun for a couple of reasons that I'll show you as we get going. One is the really good knight play here. The knights are just fabulous. Knight c3, bishop g7, Ephian Kettle's getting ready to castle, and then he goes to d6. Now, white is building up a strong pawn center by possessing the center with pawns. The key to doing that, yes, it's a lot of pawn movements, the key is make sure your pieces are backing up the pawns. That's what you want to do if you're going to push with your pawns, you want to make sure you back it with the pieces. So far, white is doing that really well. Fisher goes ahead to castles, then bishop to d3, and then the bishop comes to g4, and white will castle, and then knight c6, and bishop comes to e3, bringing out a full development. What a, what a fortress right there in the center, huh? Talk about backing your pawns up with pieces. There it is. That's pretty good. However, he's going to want to advance those pawns eventually. Fisher does a second knight move, but that is in order to be able to help him attack the white pawn roller if white gets to that point. Bishop e2. Bishop will take the f3. Take the knight, one of the guardians of the king. The bishop will take the bishop. Uh, things are going according to plan from both players as far as that goes. And now Fisher goes e5. He's going to hit the center directly. Absolutely. You must do this. You can't let that be too powerful. And white locks the center pawns. So the strategy is going to be a closed game. And when, as a general rule, again, as Silman has taught us so very well in his fabulous books, Reassess Your Chess, when the position gets closed, that is, the pawns are locked, that favors knights, as a general rule. We are about to see a beautiful display of that. <laughs> Really, truly. Very, very early on as a 12-year-old, Fisher understood this. That's not. I didn't understand this until I was in my 40s, or, or even my 50s. I had no idea this existed as a strategy. Yeah? The other knight will come to e7, of course, because he was chased off. Ah, bishop bumps back to e2, and now... Fisher pushes the f5. He has to hit the center. And this is his way of hitting the center. He bumps f4, h6, bishop to d3, and king comes to h7. Uh, he's, he's seeing ghosts. He didn't need to do that if I remember the comment correctly. Queen e2, and now you attack the center. Get rid of the pawn. Start opening up a little bit if you can. The knight will respond. Look at the backup power of the pawns with the pieces. That is a great strategy that uh, white is playing here. Knight will come up to f5. Bishop to d2. And now e takes f4, so he comes back out. He's opened up a file in the center. Now he comes back out, keeping the three pawns on the king side. He's got the majority of pawns for an end game on the king side if he so needs. Yeah, just something for the future to look at. Bishop will take the pawn, however, so there goes the majority. Drats, and he had it so well. <laughs> Isn't that the way it works? Knight comes to e5. Good post. Bishop will go to c2. 
Knight will go to d4. Fisher seems to be encroaching. Look, though, how they're so intertwined, both through possession and with control of the center. Neither one of them are letting go of it. They're playing right there in the thick of it. That's good chess. I'm just saying, that is good chess. Queen bumps to d2 because Fisher had a target from dominating the center to targets, two of our pillars. Very nice. Knight will take c4, target, the back pawn behind the pawn in the pawn chain in the center. Hitting the queen again. Bobby Fisher is making a nuisance of himself with his knights. Queen f2, and if you ever can, you should also observe target with the rook on the open file, two of our pillars, blam, and the acquiring of two more targets. Very nice, I'm just saying. And you say, well, yeah, Bobby deliberately sacrificed the exchange so that he could do this. Nice. Beautiful knight fork. Check to the king. Goodbye to the queen. That is so beautiful how he coordinated that as a 12-year-old. No kidding. Now, understand something. Please don't take my emphasizing Bobby Fischer being only 12 years old as a negative against youth playing chess. If any of you, my viewers, are just 12 years old, don't think I'm insulting you. I have absolutely no intention of doing that whatsoever. I don't care if you're six and watching my videos and playing chess. Age is irrelevant. We're having fun. That is a beautiful, beautiful move. King h1, and of course, knight takes f4, and white threw in the towel. He said, nope, I'm done. So nice central control and fight. Wonderful rook using the file and spectacular targets with the knights. All three of our pillars combined with great tactics to give us a fantastic early game of Bobby Fischer. So, I'm going to include his next game in this video. I'll do two games on this video. So hang on, I'll be right back with the next game. Don't go away. Don't even imagine you want to. Don't even pretend you're going to. Unless, of course, it's for a potty break, and then you have to come right back. All right, here's game two in this particular video. It's Bobby Fischer's sixth tournament game. He's playing Whistler. The King's Indian defense, again in 1955. Fisher's playing the black, again. Knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4. Again, the big pawn center. Nothing wrong with that as long as you have pieces backing it up. And now he does f3. Interesting. He hasn't brought out a lot of pieces yet, and now he's bishop g5. Notice how he's not backing his pawns up with a lot of pieces just yet. That could be, uh, could have interesting consequences. Queen will bump to d2, giving himself a chance to castle queenside if he so chooses. Fisher properly, when you have a, uh, a pawn flanks like this, hit it. Don't don't be timid. Don't be don't be passive. No. No, there's no reason to be passive. None whatsoever. <laughs> Watch, there's gonna be an exception to that, and I'm gonna be shown that I deserve to have four hundred rating points taken off my score. <laughs> Fisher properly does hit that pawn center. Hit it. Yes. You don't want him to have that powerful of a pawn center. E even without all the pieces supporting it, no, don't let him have that. That would be my humble opinion. Boy, do I emphasize humble. I am so humble. I am the humblest man there is in the world, and I'm proud of it. 
that's a sarcasm. Please, nobody quote me like I was serious. People do that on the internet, you know. Woohoo! D5, he locks the center again. This is a typical theme we see repeated quite often in the King's Indian. Nothing wrong with that. The moment I noticed one of Fisher's habits, at least in these early games, we'll see later as we plow into these wonderful tournament games whether he keeps this habit or not. But I've noticed when they push the d5 pawn, they build up a strong pawn center, a great pawn chain, they push the d5, Fisher will immediately launch that a pawn. The a and the b pawn. Eventually. So that, that's kind of interesting to see. He's going to give his bishop support there. Knight to c5, and that's the other place that they love to park their knight on that c5 square. Sure, absolutely. That's a great spot for a knight. Fundamentally so. Knight g to e2. Fundamentally so, I tell you. Fundamentally. You ever wonder where that word came from? That's kind of interesting, isn't it? I love studying word origins. Maybe I'll throw a few in here eventually, someday soubly hopefully, although it's doubtful. Anyway, bishop d7, knight to... So he zigzags his knight to put it at a better square to hit the squares that he's looking for, or to align his knight to be able to hit other squares that he's looking for. We'll see if he gets his objective, won't we? And Fisher goes h5, stop anything else from coming in. My suspicion is, and this is him early, uh, my suspicion is because of the way he's placed that knight, he wants to limit it, absolutely. And that's one of Steinitz's rules. To limit the knight, take away the advanced squares with your pawns. So, yeah, the knight has moved twice and come here, but now there is nowhere for him to go, and the center is locked with pawns. So, in effect, optimistically, at this point, unless he changes things, white is not playing with that knight. It's not going to be really effective because it is so severely limited. Kind of a cool strategy. Capablanca was good at that. Fisher's hero was Capablanca, and we will see more of this throughout his tournament career, is my prediction. Not a hard prediction to make. No, that does not make me psychic-delic. <laughs> well, maybe I am psychic-delic, but psychic or what it, psychoid or psycho salad, whatever the heck. Anyway, Bishop E2, continuing his development, very properly so. Queen C8, now he bumps the queen behind the bishop. Uh, white has it castled, but the, this side is kind of iffy with the pawn structure, so he may want to go to the queen side if he castles. We'll see what he does. Bishop h6, he's going to take the guardian of the king out, or at least attempt to. King h7, no, he takes it. He takes the bishop. Bishop gone, king takes the bishop, bishop gone. One less guardian for the king, that doesn't leave uh, the king in any great danger, but potentially for a future attack, possibly, you never know. Rook comes to f1. He didn't castle. That doesn't surprise us. Because of the, the structure of that side, that really doesn't surprise us. And yet, he is developing his whole army, which is great chess. Really sincerely. Well, Fisher comes back, queen d1. Don't know what that accomplished. He kind of lost a move. And, and there we have it. He castles the queen side which is the better side in this instance. And Fisher drops his knight to e8. Now, we've seen him do this in a couple of his other games when he played the King Indian. That was a maneuver he did at least early in his career. We'll see if he continues doing that career. And now Rook comes to h1, and Fisher pushes the f5. So Fisher is going to once again, just like he did in the previous game, hit the center, pushing the f5 pawn, to break up that center. Yeah? E will take f5 this in this instance. 
That didn't happen in the last game, but it does in this one. And now the bishop will take f5. Kind of interesting. He might be forcing an exchange here. Who knows? Actually, he did. Knight takes f5 check. He wanted the exchange, apparently. And then the rook takes f5. So he's on a partial uh, open file. The center isn't quite as locked, although we'll see if that helps or hinders either side. g4 hitting the target. Yep. Rook bumps up to f4. He has a target here. Yeah, it's supported, but he's got targets. He's got a horizontal as well as a vertical partial. G will take h5, opening up the king side. Pretty, pretty bold. The Fisher, the Fisher King, the Fisher King, hey, the Fisher King, <laughs> whatever, is fairly well open. Those of you who read literature will understand the allusion to that. The rest of you, bummer. Rook at D comes to G1, so check. Well, yeah, target, rook on open file. That move really shouldn't surprise us, right? Fisher simply goes to h8. Looks spooky, though, in a way, doesn't it? <laughs> a poor lonely king. Holy cow, where is Fisher's army? My prediction, because I have played a few of Bobby Fisher's games, I'm going to play all of them in the next two years with you guys, but we won't see this very often in the future. I don't think Bobby left his king that wide exposed open with two rooks on open files. I, I, I just don't think that. Oh, well, at least one of them is on it. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see, right? Uh, queen to c2. Oh, boy. Look at the angles coming in. Holy shishka and bob. Knight to g7. Okay, you got to get something over here. Quick, Bobby. Quick. Queen to g6. And now... You almost feel like Bobby's going to start sweating bullets, except, oh, I, <laughs> I took the king. Yeah! <laughs> well, there goes 500 rating points for me. I took the king. Woohoo! Hey, that's a very special magical king. Holy crap. How the heck did I do that? The king was here. Holy cow, now where am I? Queen went to g6. I don't even know how she got... She was here. God, talk about messing up again. That's, that's 600 rating points. I'm docked for that noise. Bobby has a resource. He wants to swap the queens, of course, for Pete's sake. However, here's what's so interesting. When white came to g6, he needed the rook at g6, not the queen. So white played this backwards. It's good that he has the queen, but do you see the difference here? Bobby wouldn't have been able to trade. And white would have had the attack, and white would have won. So, as we work our way through chess with our knowledge, it's important to know which piece to attack with. <laughs> right? I mean, you go, dude, that's, that's common knowledge. It is, but learning how to practice it is what takes the the practice, the effort. So White did it backwards. He did it wrong. He needed the rook up there, not the queen. But you know, when we were all younger anyway, the queen's the most powerful piece. So let her do the attacking. No. Use the queen as the backup and let the rooks do the heavy attacking. That's just kind of a cool little chess lesson there, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think so. I Very interesting. Yeah, if he'd have had... Criminy, man. If he would have had the rook there, and wherever the queen was, 
and then rook to g1. Oh, oh, this game is over. Yeah. Yeah, he had the file too, man. He had the... Okay, one of the pillars... I know, I bore the heck out of you. Tough luck, live with it. One of the pillars is rooks on open files and use the open files, but use them with the rooks. Yeah, man, double the rooks on that, and he would have had it. But Fisher caught it. So, good, good, uh, good game. And they swap. And from here, they agreed to a draw. Now, in his early career, Fisher agreed to draws, whereas later on, he really tried hard not to. He developed a tenacious, I gotta win thinking. Here they did a draw. Now, what I did, I thought, really? A draw at this point? So what I did is I worked through some variations. Here's one I came up with uh, that was kind of fun. Rook G3. Rook a bump to... Oh, no. No. Rook cow, to G3. And Rook... A to F8. I didn't put A to F8, but I'm going to put A to F8. And then knight to E4. And they're going to swap knights. Knight takes and F takes and knight takes, F takes. Rook to F4 and rook to g1, so they both each have doubled rooks, and rook to f7. And that's pretty much a draw. <laughs> so, so the draw was legit, as far as I'm concerned. Now, the next, the final 1955 tournament game of Fisher is so short that I'm also going to put it on this particular video. That way you'll get three for the price of one. So hang on, I'll get this last, the seventh game in 1955 that we have record of in a tournament. Okay, this is the third game for this video. I thought I'd combine all three because this is a very short game. Fisher is white, he's playing a guy named Briska. This is the two knights defense. This is the final tournament game that we have from 1955 when Bobby was 12 years old. He opens E4 and E5, a fine opening, absolutely fabulous opening. Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop C4, he did that a lot in his early career. I don't think he kept doing that later on. And now Knight G5 instantly, wow, what the heck, Bobby? Bishop C5, Knight takes F7. What a combo, huh? Bishop takes F2 check? <laughs> wow, what a crazy move. Now, the interesting thing is, and this is a particular game. I can't remember the name of the gambit. I don't have the book with me right now, but this is an actual gambit. The best move for White to get out of this is to put the king right there. Now, Bobby apparently didn't know that because he took the, he took the bishop with the king. And that's a no-no. <laughs> Oops. That is a no-no. Knight takes e4. Check. And now you're realizing, oh my gosh, he's in trouble. King e3, and now queen h4. Four, and you're realizing, oh my gosh, is this the fastest loss Fisher ever suffered? No. <laughs> That's all there is of this game. <laughs> Unfortunately, I would have loved to have seen the continuation. But here's what Fisher wrote. He says he got out of this mess. And he offered the draw, and his opponent took the draw. And so I thought, well, I mean, come on! That is so intriguing. So I kind of tinkered with some variations, and here's one 
possible continuation that could have happened. I'll give this to you just for kicks and giggles. It's kind of fun. Queen comes back to f3. Or, no. Queen. Queen was h4. No, queen comes to f3. Yeah, the, the white queen comes to f3. And then knight goes to f6. And then knight takes h8. And knight to g4 check. Queen takes g4. Queen takes g4. Again, this is just one possible continuation. Bishop f7 check. King to e7. Knight to c3. Knight to d4. Make sure I do this right. King to f2. d6. Knight to d5 check. King to f8, h4, leaving the queen alone, queen f5, queen f5, check, king to e1. You can see they both have a wild, zany possible attack, right? Knight takes c2, check, king goes to e2. Queen to e4 check, and you're thinking, you know, he could probably checkmate him, except he can't seem to get the rest of his pieces in here. Neither player can with this particular variation. Bishop to g4. Now here come the troops, you're thinking, all right, the checkmate is soon to be, but hold on. Rook goes to b1. Queen to d4 check. King to g3, c6, rook to f1, grab the open file, get a nasty discovered check on the king if possible. So queen comes to d3 check, king takes g4, queen takes f1, bummer that would have been a good discovered check. King goes to h3, queen to d3, check, king goes to h2, c takes d5, b3, king to e7, bishop to where are you? Bishop to h5. Knight to e1. Rook to b2. Queen to e4. Then you have d4. Then queen takes h4 check. Ooh, a nice little tactic there. King to g1. Queen takes h5. The poor knight can't seem to get out, can it? D takes E5. Rook takes H8. Finally, the poor knight ends its misery. E takes D6, check. King takes D6. You'll notice that the advantage in this particular situation is that black kept his queen. And like I say, that's... There's probably a trillion different continuations. That's just one I kind of tinkered with and had fun with, with my chess app. And that was one that it came up with. But from this point, really truly blocks up a piece and he's got the queen. So he's going to win. So it's a good thing Bobby somehow got out of it and convinced the kid to draw with him. <laughs> so anyway, there are the first seven chess games of Bobby Fischer in 1955 that we have recorded in tournament play. Um, I don't know 
where all the others are. I don't know if anybody does. Unfortunately, we don't have them all, but it is the later mature Bobby Fischer that we will learn the most from, but these have been interesting, instructive, and really kind of a good recap to see the career of Bobby Fischer take off. Now that he's off the runway in the air, we're going to see him go like great gangbusters. So stay tuned to this series. I'm on my way through all 753 Bobby Fischer chess tournament games, and through them, my goal is to strengthen my chess playing strength 500 points in the next two years. We'll see if I can do that. In the meantime, come and join us on the Backyard Professor uh, Fan Club on Lie Chess. It's called the Backyard Professor Fan Club. And uh, we're playing chess together. We're studying tactics together. We're talking about all kinds of fun stuff. They're talking about putting me together with Jeremy Silman for a video, which I think would be an absolute hoot and a holler. It would be a fun thing to do. Jeremy Silman, I know you're not watching my junk, but if you do happen to look at this video, let's get together and let me do some videos with you. I would love to do that. That would be awesome. If someone knows Jeremy Silman and you think he might be interested in doing something like that, contact him. I may contact him through his website. We'll see. But anyway, in the meantime, we're working through Bobby Fischer's tournament games. So be good, be happy, do well, have fun, keep smiling. It makes people wonder what you're up to. And I will see you in the next chess video.